Good morning, Johnny. Good morning, Nina. My little unicorn. <laughs> My little unicorn, yeah. With the busted horn, his horn busted last night. <laughs> And there's a story behind that, but first we're going to talk about, well, it's, it all ties in. We did, a, we did our, our viewing of the May Pang documentary the last weekend yesterday. Yes. And uh, the documentary, would you, how would you categorize it? Good, bad? Um, not, no, not, not particularly good uh, as far as documentaries go. The pictures just, for the only reason being that whatever pictures that were kind of new of John were just flashed for like a millisecond. Yeah. It's almost like a selfishness on her part. Like, no, these are mine. So you can see them for like a half a second and that's it. Yeah. And that's not the way to make a, it's funny that you're bringing this up now because you didn't say anything about it when we watched it. But you could tell I kept stopping. Uh, you know, we I got it as a free rental on Amazon. And um, so I had the ability to keep stopping it, of course, uh, while, it, while it played. But you really had to really get in there to see these pictures because she didn't want to show them to you. Mm, that's how she was, Lena. And that's how she still is. Very possessive of my memory and my legacy and me as a soul uh, where she's concerned but I don't want to get ahead because we have you have a couple of important points I think you want to make with regard to our journey here well I was very moved by the documentary I know I just said I wasn't crazy about the technique used making it that still stands but I was very moved by it because that girl's plight moves me. May Pang's story moves me because of what she had and what she then lost and never fully recovered from. Mm. Her entire life just, it would have been, I don't know, would it have been better without you in it? I tend to think so, but then she probably wouldn't say that. Because it's very important to her. It's her identity. But her identity is the, as the girlfriend who, who, who was with John Lennon for a, a few m months. Right. Um, yeah, that is a very big part of her identity and, and will be until the day she dies. And perhaps that is what some people require. Mm -hmm. I don't know her requirements uh I knew she was very expectant and hopeful that Alice's story would go on and on. Yes. Uh, and um, it made me sad watching it with you for the same reasons of that I always feel like I'm sorry she got so damaged by the whole thing. Right. And uh, you can make you can make as many proclamations as you want about how oh this is not going to be permanent and she could say that's fine I can deal with that but those are all just words and when push came to shove it was a uh, it was really not a cool situation and my point John yeah my point as John as the I guess semi perpetrator of this charade of a relationship is how could any relationship that started off on that footing of mother setting her up with me and all that, how could anything really lasting be expected to come of that? It's such a strange beginning. Um, it's unorthodox. Yes. And I know I lived much of my life in an unorthodox way. But it's spiritually unsound. I feel that it was done in the uh, spirit of being a helpful thing as far as mother was concerned. And I talked myself into thinking that it could be a healthy thing for, for me. <laughs> Unfortunately, I wasn't really thinking of anyone else at that time. And... Um, 
as far as getting uh, your uh, your whistle uh, blown, well, here's what happened last night. We'll we'll just and we'll we'll round back, but but don't forget the point we wanted to talk about the time when she left, when May Pang after I had beat her up a bit, uh, and I did not apologize. Yeah, we'll get to the unicorns in a moment. Well, he John wanted to just explain r- right after watching this thing, this horn chipped off. Of the of the male unicorn, <laughs> and um, John said, "That's what you get when you let your dick lead you around. You get in trouble." Mm-hmm. So it's really weird. I was like, "Damn it!" And I still have the chip, but it's not. I'm not going to glue it back on. It's kind of symbolic to the day we watched the Maypang. Lost Weekend video and, and the lesson that John learns uh, and I learn. And this is, uh, they, they can both be, I, I'll, take some of the, I'll take some of the heat off you. I can be this one sometime, yeah. Anyway, let's stop, yeah, stop banging them together. Why not? They like that. They're going to chip again. No, so, okay, so the, the one part of the, 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 the May Pang video that, not many people uh, realize, and it, she glossed over it in a way like the the explanations were never good. Of she just the underlying message is John was controlled by Yoko and he was ho- helpless to do anything for himself. Again, these were not true statements, and uh, but <clears throat> I don't want to get ahead uh, without this making sense. No, well. It was during after one of the drunken beatings, right? And when uh, when we woke up the next day, yeah, John didn't apologize or anything. He just said to her, "This is not going to work, right? And you should go back to New York. This is not going to work. I'm going to stay here. You go back to New York." In California, John was going to say, and she dutifully packed her bags and was banished. After getting roughed up by him the night before or whatever. Now, can you... And, and, and then, then she's in New York, no job, no apartment, doesn't know what to do, ends up calling Yoko for help and says, you know, John kicked me out and uh, he got violent, he drinks, and uh, I don't know what to do. Do I still have a job? Whatever. She was kind of, you know, just fucking floundering and lost this is in the middle of the lost weekend folks not something talked about a lot Mm -hmm. and um yoko said well you have to go back there you have to go back to california because his wife cynthia his first wife cynthia is coming with the kid and they need a coordinator to, to, to to make the plans to go to disneyland and all that you're gonna have to help him you're his secretary. That's basically what you are. So if you're on the payroll, you know, I don't know what's going on with the two of you now as far as stooping and all that, but you got to go back there. And she did. May Pang went back there and just resumed her duties as a concubine, as a concubine. And that's John's word. And a, and a managerial director of my day-to-day activities, especially with my ex-wife who I wanted a buffer from uh, because I really just wanted to see my boy, but she was part of the deal, and I just want... I was like, I, you know, let the two gals go go gaggle off together and me and my boy here. Right. Okay, so do you want to talk a little bit more on that time? What happened exactly? You told her to go back to New York? I I did not apologize. She's right. I did not apologize for the incident. I said it's not working because it wasn't working. Uh, I was starting at that time to feel the pinch of, I'm with this woman. I don't really love her. She's a nice girl. I like the sex, right? And a big part of why you liked the sex was because she was, you were her teacher. Yes, I liked that role. I had never had that role before. I had never played that part before. Showing her some how to have some good sex. And she was a young, supple thing. And she didn't know the first thing about being a great lover. And I sure did. 
and not I'm not blowing my me own horn here, right? My horn, if you will, because when you blow your own horn, sometimes it yeah pops off. But uh, I liked that role; it excited me. I'm sorry, I have to be honest. That's all right. I would rather you to be 100% honest about this stuff because I understand it. Because you know what? I did the same thing with that guy. Yeah. And he was older than me. But I, yeah. And the reason we're good at it is because we've had a lot of practice over the centuries. You and me, honey, we is naturals. But you're my natural one, you know. Oh, don't make me cry, please. That's what you need to know. I know that, honey. I just... The whole thing is very emotional. So, so John, it was really his conscience that sent her back to New York. He's like, I'm going to fucking do this on my own out here. I can't be using this woman. Look what I'm doing. I'm like strangling her when I'm drunk. It's like part of me knows that she doesn't belong here with me. She doesn't belong in this lifestyle. But meanwhile, she loved being part of that because it was the most exciting thing. And what 22-year-old girl would not be totally fucking excited to be like with John Lennon and running around in, in Hollywood meeting all these fucking actors and actresses and, and having a ball every fucking day. Sitting by the pool, sipping pina coladas, and at night John Lennon wants to, uh, you know, show you the ropes. Okay, so this, I mean, that's something that, you know... You give a dog a bone, they don't want to let that go. And literally, yeah, she had my bone. She had his bone, and and he was controlling her, John. Yes, she was addicted to the, not just the lifestyle of the rich and famous, she was addicted to John's, uh, yeah, his ability to please her. Not all guys are good at that, right? So, take it from one who knows, you know. He really put some thought into it. <laughs> You're the one natural one. So then she went back to New York, and that's exactly what happened. Yoko sent her back out to California. Like, was Yoko right to do that? I don't think she was right to do that, but I don't... I didn't really have much... I, okay, I had a say always in everything, but I was exhausted and I was compromised chemically. That's the best way I could put it. And I was just like, okay, she's coming back. But uh, I even told her, stay, you know, if things are getting like that, you better steer clear of me. Don't start in with me because I don't have any memory of doing these things and you're just looking for trouble. So steer clear. I told me that. You know, right. But she thought she's had to be my bulldog protector. You know, she's going to control it. Always these controlling women, you know. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, I would just erupt and not be controllable. It's like you can't, you know, you can't. It's so. Uh, but May in the May in the movie said, I know now that John wanted me back there, but Yoko had to do it for him because he didn't have the balls to ask me himself. What did you think of that? Her saying that. It's just another way of her trying to save face of her role in the whole thing and by villainizing Yoko and making Yoko seem like the puppet master. And me seeming like the weakling who can't do anything except get it up for her. I'm not saying this out of anger and I'm not saying this out of bitterness. I'm saying this out of regret that it was to such a point. And, and I'm glad we watched it because fine... Let me hear everything she's saying. Let you hear everything she's saying. And then we can talk about it. And yes, her and Jules have a friendship. But you could see that her attachment to him is a little protracted. She hangs on him kind of like a monkey. Especially at the end of that video. I love you. I love you. Smooching at him. And he's being polite. But it makes it, it makes me uncomfortable to watch her with him. 
and almost it seems like, you know, she she showers the love on him that she could not shower on me because I was not receptive to that type of relationship with her. It was not, it was not what she would have wanted it to be. And that's regrettable, but it was only 18 months. But I understand, I'm not saying get over it, it was only 18 months. I'm not saying that. But I am saying you've had such a long life and it really has completely revolved around that time. And so that's for me to question. And that's for me to examine. And I hope she's had a lot of happiness. And I hope she continues to have more happiness. And I hope she finds what she's looking for. And who she's looking for. Because it ain't me, babe. No, 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 it ain't me. It ain't me you're looking for, babe. Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> Today, I love this blanket, by the way. It's got big sunflowers on it. Today, we're just... Uh, so that's it, really. Today, we just... Oh, I feel so bad. Well, look where his horniness got him. Got his horn chipped. Yeah, that's... Uh, that is too fucking bad. That's all right. We could... F stop clanking them. They're very... De yeah, these are fluorite. They're very delicate. Should I, should I shave? No, don't shave it down anymore. It's fine. Little horsey will just have to have a little short horn. Unlike yours truly. Yeah, go ahead and brag about it. Here's me on a good day. Ooh, pointy. Yeah. Aren't these beautiful? Yeah. Yeah, we'll be doing, we're doing a fluorite uh, meditation today. Radio reading, my sweet man? Yeah. I'm so happy. Okay. Sounds like May Pang, the love you threw away. I can't forget. It's never gonna. Yeah. So. How do you want to label this video? I know you want her to... She watches everything. She sees them all. So just do... Uh, get a photo of... Uh... No, we'll just do a photo. We'll make our own artwork of the Lost Weekend. Okay. I I know the one you want to use. Yeah. And I wasn't think. You, if you think with your dick, that's... There's no... There's no... That's... There's no thinking involved. Um, I guess that's the message, too. But... These messages, they can, you know, they can go on and on. I don't want to come off as pontificating, right? I just want to explain my viewpoint. Uh, you almost said my side. Yeah, it's not his side, her side. It's a perception of, of what was happening. And she was much younger. And, you know, a part of me really liked the role of teacher and elder somehow, like, and that she idolized me like a groupie. I did like that. But I also had the familiarity of having worked with her before that and been around her all the time. So when you're around certain types all the time, Lena, you'll admit it yourself. When you worked in certain contracting and accounting firms, there were some really good looking young guys that you were hot for. And you never acted on it, and neither did they. But there was an awful lot of flirting going on. And I'm telling you, I saw every last one of them. That you, uh, that one fella, yeah, he was cute. He reminded me of you, that's all. Especially when he grew a beard. Well, she reminded me a lot of you. Just in the fact that she was a free spirit at heart. And she was from Queens. She had that accent. Never mind that she was Asian. That that You don't need to look like somebody to remember. I know, honey. He didn't look like you either. I know. 
but he reminded me of you. He was nice. Yeah. Yeah. You look for that nice, that spark, you know, and and you and if they're attractive, you think, oh, why not? Till the real thing comes back to me. And when I went back to Yoko, it was time. You were within reach. And that's the way it went down. That's all. Right, so the thing about May too is like she she keeps saying it's unresolved and it's a big mystery and why Yeah, it is a weird fucking total mystery. And if I wasn't in the equation, me, Lena, he probably wouldn't have would you have gone back to Yoko if you weren't part of the whole thing? I never would have been with Yoko in the first place, so it's nothing that I can compare anything to. That's the thing, right. That's like you can you can go around and around with this whole story, but it all boils down to John and Lena and this crazy extra dimensional relationship that supersedes everything else. And everything that you do in the three D is to accommodate getting back together with this soul flame, this other that nobody really knows what you're doing but you. And the closest thing I had to people knowing what I was doing was the boys, right? You know, so it was this insular, crazy experience, and you keep questioning yourself, am I insane? And maybe I should just go with this one. She does, you know, care about me, and she, she there's one thing for sure, she would always take care of details, uh, and I needed a detail person in my life, but it's not, it's, sometimes it's not enough, right? And so it's not enough just because she was crazy about me. I still didn't feel that she really knew me, because how could she? And, well, that's about it, yeah. There's no point in flogging this thing, right, Mr. Flogger? <laughs> hey, hey, what's up? Mm. Those old videos of Barry Manilow and, and uh, songs and uh, Tony Orlando, they sound really good, yeah. Listen, I gotta, if I can't do any arm work today, I gotta figure out some leg work. I'll figure it out for you. Don't you worry about it. I'll get it all figured out. We're on a good start. We got the yoga box. We get we could do plenty from right where we are. I love you. <laughs> you too, honey. What are you doing? <laughs> I just feel relieved because after we watched the video, we were both kind of shell shocked. We were. I don't. I think it came out in two thousand twenty two. So it's two years that thing's been sitting in my queue, and we haven't watched that May Pang thing, and we finally watched it. And uh, it's no, it's like no coincidence. Well, he's gone now, but he was in that doorway. Bunny is is beginning to walk again. Like it started yesterday, and like John has been telling me, once we watch that, we're going to be free. And you know what? In some way, she may will be free too. What, but you know, we can't watch it until we're both ready, and we have not been both ready to watch that. Until yesterday, and then it just and then it just popped on. Like uh, I was like shocked. Like oh, we're watching this now. But that's the way Johnny works. So that's the way mother and father work. And yesterday I was completely immobilized, and uh, I had nowhere to go but uh, to sit here with my Netflix or whatever the fuck it's uh, you know, Amazon Prime. Oh, I'm Prime. Indeed. So, yeah, it was, it was really, it was a really, uh, heavy thing. And at the end, you know, she's kind of crying. She got no closure and then John was shot. And, and also what she says about you got, you know, she always, she's very esoteric about it. And she just alludes to, oh, we got together after 
uh, sh you know, Sean was born, and we, we, were, we were intimate in the years to follow. Twice. It happened twice in the years that followed. And they were just weird, weird, tawdry experiences uh, that we both just, I felt foolish about them. And ashamed of myself for going back and giving her a crumb of hope and jeopardizing my sanity because I had finally found some kind of sanity with the birth of Sean. You know, Sean became my focal point for sanity because you feel so responsible for this child. I did in such a way that I had never felt responsible for anything ever in my life. So Sean was my point. He was my arrow. You go to that. Everything else is just ridiculous. Yes, even even that thing is just ridiculous. Everything's a joke when you have little Shawnee or somebody like him in your life. Yeah. I could see that. You guys are really, you're just like the cutest couple ever. And like, and then, but then how do you feel about, well, how do I, I'm glad Julian has been friendly to her. He should be. Mm -hmm. She was very good to him and kind of crazy about him because she, you know, <laughs> It was an extension of me. I don't want to sound like that. Uh, well, there's nothing you could do but sound like that because it's the truth. You know? So, he, he was a tangible, easily accessed, uh, impressionable, you know, young, young boy, child who wouldn't love this, you know, cute Asian chick pouring all this attention all over you. You'd have to be fucking a zombie or gay, right? And even a gay guy would like it, right? <laughs> Speaking of gay guys, oh my God. My new hero in this fucking life is a guy named Julio Torres. <laughs> is that his name? Yes, please. Let's show this. Here's just a, a, a quick uh, shot of the HBO special, but he's done so much more stuff, this guy. Julio Torres. He's very crazy. He's so deadpan, he's so adorable, he's so gay, and also so talented, and HBO sucked him up. He was a writer for SNL, he's a Dominican, uh, or what is he, John? Oh, not Dominican, what the hell is he, I can't. He's a, like a, he, he had to fight for his green card to be able to stay here when he was just like a kid. Came over here with a dream to do all these weird fucking things and make weird inventions. He somehow becomes a writer for SNL of the, like the greatest skits of, of their later years. I knew nothing about Julio Torres, but John guides me to people he knows I'm going to be totally iconic about. I am so in love with him. So far we have watched almost everything he has done on HBO. They've given him several uh, specials and showcases. He is so likable. He is so hilarious. Oh, let's show this thing on Instagram of him and his, him and his, uh, his robot dog. Hold on. On Instagram, he goes under the name Space Prince Julio. Look what he writes here. This, this is a whole story of him and his robot dog. And he makes these outfits and the outfit for the dog. Paparazzi disrupted my private time with my beautiful rescue, Janet. <laughs> For his rescue. She wears a collar from my friend's business, Lunge World. If you need to know that badly. Or don't. Just leave me alone, he says. 
Another thing he does during his uh, videos is he'll just start, like, when the characters are arguing, he'll just always say, stop screaming at me. Stop screaming at me. And they're like, nobody's screaming. But he's just like, <laughs> I can't describe him. Look at him. He's giving the finger to the paparazzi with his little dog with him at the window. There he is crossing a street in Manhattan. Looks like he's hailing a cab. I don't know. You have to experience Julio Torres. Look at this. This dog is getting licked by another dog, an actual real dog. And now at the end of a busy day, napping with his dog on his lap with a little, look at a little stick in the door. <laughs> a little stick in the dog's mouth. He puts a little stick in the robot dog's mouth. <laughs> I can't tell you how much I love... Yeah. Now that's a guy who knows how to make a video. Yeah, yeah. He's fantastic. So just Google Julio Torres and enjoy because he's adorable. He's... He, 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 you Again, you must just watch him for five seconds and you'll... If you're like me and John, we just binge watched him like for two days and... I swear that got me, you know, that kind of primed me for what we went through yesterday with May Pang's documentary. It's like I needed two days of laughing before that. Yeah, because ultimately I just felt horrible for her. Like, oh, this is, gut you know, this is gut wrenching. Like, you know, just to, I don't know. Yuck. She's like, it's like being Cinderella at the ball and then you're just thrown out on your ass and and there's no way you can ever return. Nope, can't go back there. Nope, you could be as good a person as you want. You can be so fucking... And she does like the same kind of stuff I do. She does uh, animal rescue. She's not a musician, uh, but she tries to design jewelry and stuff. Like, you know, she's kind of... I'd probably be friendly with a girl like her, honestly. Yeah. I'd be friendly with a girl like her for the animal rescue alone. John, you never told me about what happened with Major and Minor. What's your gut feeling? That she kept them. Mm. Is that right? Uh, that's going to be a surprise answer. But you, you told me your gut feeling. You're sure? Yeah, I don't see you bringing those kittens back to they had two kittens major and minor black and white kittens that john named named him for the piano keys naturally now and i keep asking him what became of major and minor because you had only had them a few months before you w walked out on her you're not going to tell me no nope. you'll get the answer when we get jack and lindy here you'll get your answer i almost feel like asking her but no don't do that don't do that. But my in my intuition is that she kept them. All right. You're smiling, so we'll, we'll see. I'll oh, stop it. You're in a better mood than you were before. Well, I don't like I don't like to feel bummed out. And that fucking thing made me feel bummed out. Yeah, right. Mostly for just the, int honestly, just for the intimations that, uh, you know, that I don't know what I'm doing. I, I don't know. It's, but I understand she's coming, the place she's coming from is kind of hostile and she fluctuates pretty wildly between her emotions. I know that. Yes. Cause John does try to help her. Yes. He, he, he goes to. John, John is very busy out there. He, he helps all kinds of people. He helps you if you need him. He does. Who's ever listening to this out there? I'm his twin flame and I'm his channel, but I don't, I don't uh, profess to own him in any sense of the word. He, he helps so many. So many. When you're out there, you can do that. There's a lot of you to spread around. 
Right, honey? Yeah. And you're very unselfish. Why would I be selfish? And what to what end? To what end would that? What what would that do for me? He's all mine, 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 mine. And it's like big deal. Like okay, that would make you a very uninteresting soul if all you did was just. I mean, I don't know. I guess it's nice to have a lot of attention from you. Of course, it's of course it's nice. I'm not saying it's. Not, I guess. I know what you're saying. But Lena did bring up a very good point in the very beginning of this video. The, the, the camera work was terrible on that documentary because the, the, rare, the couple of really rare photographs she just showed for a split nanosecond and then took it off the screen. Right. And to me, that was like, it was a selfish, it was a selfish move as a documentary maker. Like, show that fucking photograph. No one has seen this photo of John. Show it, you stupid cunt. <laughs> That's my Lena. That's me, all right. 